This video will talk about storm water. It will cover what storm water is, how man-made structures impact it, and the environmental issues related to it. What is storm water runoff? Many of you are probably familiar with the water cycle, which describes how water moves on, under, and above the surface of the earth. A very important part of the water cycle involves looking at what happens to storm water, which is any type of water that falls to the ground during a storm event, like snow, rainwater, or hail. When there's a storm, lots of things can happen to the water. Sometimes it lands directly into water bodies, like lakes, rivers, and seas. Sometimes this water falls into really cold areas, like on top of ice caps on mountains or on glaciers, and freezes. Sometimes this precipitation falls on land, and when it does, some of that water flows through the soil, where plants can absorb it through their roots, or it reaches subsurface stores of groundwater, while the rest of it will end up flowing across the land until it reaches a body of water. Water like this that flows across the Earth's surface is known as runoff. How do man-made structures impact stormwater runoff? The addition of man-made objects into the environment changes how stormwater moves through it. A lot of our cities are filled with buildings, and our surface is covered with concrete, asphalt, and different types of stone. These types of materials don't let water flow through them, like different soils do, and are known as impervious surfaces. Cities and their man-made structures have a lot more impervious surfaces in them than naturally exist, and this leads to a lot of extra stormwater runoff sloshing around on the surface when it rains, which can flood our cities if we don't find ways to move that water to some other place. To help the runoff reach its final destination, we have had to build systems of drains and pipes running through our cities to take any stormwater runoff off the roads into these water systems and to whatever water body it needs to get to. What are the environmental effects of stormwater runoff? When we think of stormwater, it's important to realize that it's not just water that's flowing into the drains and the bodies of water. Think about all the stuff in our cities that could get carried into the drains with the water. City trash, animal waste, artificial fertilizers, cleaning products, spilled car oil, and all sorts of objects and chemicals that the natural environment isn't used to. Most stormwater runoff doesn't actually go through a filtering or cleaning process before it reaches larger water bodies, meaning that all the stuff the stormwater picked up along the way goes into the lakes, rivers, and seas with it. This can disrupt a lot of the ecology that already exists in them. In the water, much like on land, there is a natural pecking order. At the bottom of the food chain, you have creatures that feed off sunlight and nutrients, much like plants do on land. These guys are called primary producers. They exist in the largest numbers and help support the rest of the system. As you go up the food chain, you get crustaceans, like crabs and crayfish, then fish, which get bigger and bigger until you get to the top-level predators in the ecosystem, like sharks. Since they all use and share the same important and limited resources in the water, this food chain only really works when the numbers of all these creatures stay balanced. One of the biggest problems we see from surface runoff involves two specific chemicals, nitrogen and phosphorus, which are contained in human and animal waste, certain cleaning products, and agricultural products like fertilizers. These minerals get carried with the stormwater runoff into water bodies and add a lot more of these chemicals to the water than the environment is used to. When you add a lot of nitrogen or phosphorus to the water, two of the major nutrients that algae, an aquatic primary producer, need to survive, these creatures can reproduce and grow very quickly. When they consume these nutrients and their populations grow too fast, they release a lot of waste products that are toxic to some of the other creatures in the water, and they end up using a lot of the water's limited oxygen that some of the other aquatic creatures needed themselves. This leads to huge drops in the numbers of other species in the water and completely disrupts the normal water biology. These large episodes of algae growth are known as harmful algae blooms. Algae blooms can turn water a greenish-blue color that almost looks like someone spilled paint, 
and can create layers of algae so thick you cannot see more than an inch or two below the water's surface. Harmful algae blooms are a huge problem in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, the water system that both the Potomac and Anacostia rivers are a part of. In conclusion, storm water is any form of water that falls to the ground during a storm, runoff is water that falls on land and flows across its surface, man-made structures increase the amount of stormwater runoff, stormwater drainage systems often don't filter runoff and end up taking waste and pollutants into water bodies, and finally, pollutants in water bodies lead to harmful algae blooms which kill off species and damage healthy water ecosystems. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked my video.